Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this lecture, we are going to see the Databricks notebooks. We are going to see everything all about Databricks notebooks, how you can use them and all other functionalities that are associated with the Databricks notebooks. So here I am in my Databricks cluster and uh, you can see this is the Databricks workspace. Now here when you click on the workspace, you will see there are multiple folder options, right? So here are all the folder options you can see. That is the workspace, then favorites, trash. If I click uh, here, if I open this workspace folder, then you can see two additional folders are there. That is repo, shared and users. So repos are basically linked with your Git repositories for version control systems. It might be linked with Azure DevOps, GitHub, Bitbucket, etc. The second one is shared one. And here, if you have the shared environment in your Databricks, then all the shared notebooks you can access from here. And then user. When you click on the user's notebook, you can see right now there is one user that is Ratford Akshay 944. This is my Databricks account, right? And if you have multiple users, then you will get the multiple folders with their username listed in this. And you can create new folders anywhere you want. So I am going to click, I am going to right click on the workspace and here you can see create. In the create option, you can create folder, notebook, file, query, dashboard, etc. So now I am going to create a new folder. So let's name the folder as learning. Okay, now you can see along with all other folders in the workspace, I have learning folder, repos, shared users, learning, right? So this is my learning folder and I am going to create a notebook in this folder. You can create your Databricks notebooks in any of the folders depending on your requirement and your project needs. So once you right click on the folder, you can see back refresh save this all options you will get here just click on the folder and right click you will get the same context menu that has multiple options like create folder git folder notebook etc so i am going to click on the notebook otherwise there is option here create button from here also you can uh, open your notebooks okay so i am going to create a notebook so create notebook and now this is your Databricks notebook. So this is the structure of the Databricks notebooks and here you can see if I highlight the things this is the name of your Databricks notebook. Here you can see what are the language available for your Databricks notebook and the default language is listed there. So right now this notebook is using Python. Okay and after that you can like star this notebook or make this notebook as a favorite notebook then you will see the run all button to run all the sales in your notebook you will see the connect button this is basically help you to connect with your clusters and if you don't have cluster in that case uh, this notebook will help you to create the cluster with the help of this button apart from that you can schedule notebook also and share option is also there to share the notebook in the right hand side uh, i can you can see here if i uh, this open this panel you can see this is the workspace and here you can navigate to your directory structure or the folder structure of your notebook right and here other options are also there that is catalog option is also provided with and databricks assistant is also provided here so you can chat with this large language model that is provided by Databricks assistance. Now I am going to close it for now and also minimize this thing. So this is your Databricks notebook cell. Basically in Databricks, we will run or write our code in the form of the cells. Cells are nothing but the simple or sample snippet of your code. Right now the default language is Python and you can see here you can change your default language from Python to SQL, Scala and R that is supported by Databricks. 
so first of all i am going to create a cluster so you can see i don't have any cluster right now so it will pop up this menu for me so here general compute or sql warehouse so in general compute i don't have any cluster right so i can click on this create a resource and uh, from here i can create a simple cluster so here you can see personal compute then this is my cluster name and uh, these are the basic details of the cluster and it's uh, like cost is 0.75 dbu per hour so i am going to create this cluster so now cluster is created and uh, my unless my cluster is provisioned i am not able to run any notebook so meanwhile i will show you the structure of the cell so here in the structure of the cell you can see multiple options are there here you can expand your cell if you have multi line code then you can expand with this button and you can see your code or you can hide out to your code so your notebook looks more cleaner if you have multiple cell right then here you have a number that is the cell number 1 so this is the cell 1 if i create more cells then you can see this is the cell number 2 okay here you can write your code so i am going to create a variable it is where hello world okay so now this is my variable okay here you can see python is the default language for this databricks cell in the notebook you can change the language for specific cell also once you click on this you can see you can shift to markdown python sql scala and r that are provided with the help of this you can uh, use the focus mode in the cell and here you can see edit the code with the help of databricks assistant now once you click on this three dot menu you have multiple options that are provided to you for use uh, like formatting the cell so like this copy cell and you can cut cell these are the basic operation then you can add cell above or below the current cell then you can move the cell down here you can use the shortcut uh, like control alt down and control up alt up then you can add commands you can like use the python formatter so it will format the code in your cell then you can add titles collapse cell you can hide cell and clear output these are all the options that you can use with the cell along with the delete cell option so these are the basic uh, functionalities that are provided with the cell now here this is the delete button with the help of that you can delete the cell here you can see i have deleted the second cell that i have created and here once you come here you can see my cluster akshay rathod's personal compute cluster is getting provisions it not provisioned it and here you can see more option or you can create a new resource as well if i click on this you can see you have multiple options like detach this cluster with the notebook then detach and reattach the cluster with this notebook you can terminate the cluster apart from that you can see the configuration for the cluster driver logs spark ui logs or spark ui and a web terminal as well so these are the all options that are available with the databricks notebooks specific cells now along with that if you are able to see we have option like this uh, this menu at the top here right so here you can see this is the option where you have different menus such as file edit view run and help so let's see these menus one by one now the file menu it will provide you the basic commands that you can use with the file that is you can create new notebook you can import notebook then you can create new dashboard in the notebook then you can schedule your notebook change default cell languages clone rename export export is one of the most important option in this menu 
and here you can see you have four different types of export and uh, that are like this dbc archive that is databricks archive file then source file basically this is the python file for your notebook then ipynv notebook or ipython notebook that is jupyter notebook kind of format and html these are the four options uh, that you can use to export your notebooks once you can export you can use it if you export it as a dbc archive then you can use that notebook or that whole structure in other databricks workspace as well so these are the options that are provided with the notebooks also here you can see notebook formatter also there and uh, you can format your notebooks with the help of this here source for scala python sql and r okay now the second option is edit and in edit basic options you will get is undo or delete cell then basic options like cut copy paste and delete then uh, the options that are provided with the cell insert a cell above insert a cell below then you can select all cells you can format a specific cell like whatever the code in that cell you can format that like indentation and all then you can use the format notebook itself so it will format the whole notebook then uh, python indentation you can set it from here so by default it's a uh, four spaces or you can set it for two spaces as well so i am not going to change it i like the four spaces format for the python indentation and uh, here you can see add parameters and uh, find and replace functionality that is available in every edit options for another softwares okay now after that you will get the view option in the view option you can uh, view your notebook in the different format so right now this is active you can add new dashboards then notebook layouts here some layouts that are provided that uh, that is like centralized layout or like full width layout is provided you can again structure your cell this is the standard that is default or you can like create the results only or side by side so i will show you the side by side and let's run this cell so, just a second i have refreshed So now you can run this cell by clicking on this button. When you click on this, you can see run cell, debug cell. This option you will get. Uh, otherwise, you can use the option like uh, control and enter to run the specific cell. So now if you see my cluster is attached with the notebook, right? And now this cell is run. Okay, now I am going to, huh, let's change the view. And now notebook layout, so cell output side by side so i will print this and let's rerun the cell and you can see the hello world is printed in the side by side way this is one way but uh, i used to use like the standard way and uh, that standard way is like this below the cell you will get all the results okay so this is the options provided in the view options then workspace theme you can use the light theme that is the default theme of the databricks or you can use the dark theme then editor theme side panels appearance this all things are customizable and uh, you can like explore these options then some options about clusters like web terminal uh, driver logs those are also customizable here for your view then you will get a run option and in the run option so let me change it to dark mode okay so this is the run option and in the run option you can see run and debug and here you will get the option run all run selected cell run all above run all below run selected text etc etc then you can clear clear all cell output or you can clear selected cell output clear uh, states of your cell these are all the things you can do then go to the last cell that is run and these are the option detach from the cluster reattach this all option you will get here in the help option you can search any action then you have the keyboard shortcuts and uh, these are the most common used shortcuts that we can use in the databricks 
so some of them are like switch to the command mode that is escape then control alt and p for like insert cell above or n to insert cell below then you can run like control and enter that will run the current cell shift and enter that will run the current cell and create a new cell and change the focus these all or shortcuts are here and you can explore the shortcuts uh, by your convenience and you can use them in the databricks notebooks so now one more thing in the databricks notebook that we can explore and uh, that is this sidebar and here you can see multiple options that are provided in the sidebar right so the first option is the comment here uh, with the cell for every cell you can add comments if you are working on multiple or shared environments then other people or the developers that can comment on the specific cell and then you can uh, leverage that comment for your development then ml flow experiments uh, this is mostly used by data scientists and we will cover this thing in the future lectures as well after that you can see the version history here and whatever the changes uh, that are there in the databricks notebooks that are saved as a version you can see uh, if i click on the specific then there is no cell is added then i have added another cell you can see these are all the options that are available in the version history and this is the most current version okay then here is the variable with the help of that you can check your variable right now only where variable is here and you can check its value so if you are exploring your databricks notebooks or if you are working on a, some complicated uh, etl operation or some flow then in that scenario you can use this to track your variables and their values after that this is the library section and here you can see what are all the libraries that are associated with your databricks right so if i refresh this okay there are multiple filters and python libraries that you can explore right now it's not uh, showing me the types but yeah from here uh, you can see the what are all libraries that are available with your specific notebook instance or at the cluster level or at databricks runtime level so these are all the options that you can use in the databricks right and this is all about the databricks notebooks how you can use the databricks notebooks uh, for this lecture this is all and we will see you in the another lecture if you like this video then please follow me and uh, share this video so that we can reach to multiple peoples and subscribe this channel and if you have any doubts then feel free to ask the, your questions in the comment section below i will see you in the next lecture till then happy coding